Howdy, AP Breakout. It is Ms. Cush. We are now looking at 1.8, the rational functions and zeros. These are Mr. Passwater's notes. There's his name. Uh, so big shout out to him. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so a rational function is the ratio of two polynomial functions. Okay, um, as we, let's see. So if we have a function, um, and a, a polynomial over a polynomial, it's going to have zeros anywhere the um, numerator is equal to zero, and it's going to be undefined anywhere the um, denominator is equal to zero. We will discover later that it'll either, if it, where it's undefined, it'll either be an asymptote or a whole. Okay, so we'll talk about that in other videos. But um, So now we want to solve some inequalities, and we love to do these sign diagrams. Um, I love to do the sign diagrams. So the things that we need to consider, um, let me see, make sure the inequality has zero on the other side. Oh, yes. It's, life gets hard if that's not. Um, make sure you have something over something. Make sure you have one rational function. Super. Okay. Um, and let's figure out, um, okay, anywhere that the numerator equals zero or anywhere the denominator equals zero. Um, create a sign chart with the values. Be careful to mark where h of x equals zero so that we never, okay. Um, so how, what I would say with this one is I use a dotted, I would use a dotted line for this. Um, and then maybe I would use, um, if we're g of x, I would use a solid line, even if there, it doesn't allow us to be equal later. Um, this will still help me just do both. Okay, test values to see whether the values are positive or negative, interpret the sign chart. Okay, so on this one here, I see that my, I have a zero at two, so I'm gonna use a, dot, a solid line for a zero. I have an asymptote at negative six, I have an asymptote at positive three. Okay, so let's plug in, um, let's plug in zero right here. If I do, I get negative two, I get a, well, I get, when um, plug in, how do I write this? Plug in zero. And I get a negative divided by a positive times a negative, which a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So right in this interval, it's gonna be positive. I did not save myself enough space. Um, let's plug in negative seven. I get a negative divided by a negative times a negative, which is gonna give me, that's three negatives, gives me a negative, this is negative. Let's plug in a two and a half. So two and a half is gonna make this positive, positive, and negative, which is negative, and four. Positive, 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 positive. Okay, so where are we greater than or equal to zero? Um, we are greater than or equal to zero. Notice we have to use a soft bracket on negative six because we are not, e that, that was an asymptote or a whole. We haven't talked, I mean, it's an asymptote, but you might, it might be a whole and the same situation would apply. Okay, but we can equal two, and then we're gonna pick it up again and go from three to infinity. I'm sorry, that was really jumbled, but there's your answer. Okay, next one, ooh, we need to factor. Let me get more space. Okay. So, looking at this one, I can factor the numerator to x minus 2 times x plus 2. I can factor the denominator to x minus 5 squared. So, when I do that, I know that I have uh, a positive 5 is an asymptote, and I have a positive 2, nope, I'm going to use a solid line, and a negative 2, positive 2, negative 2 are my, um, my zeros. And now, let's see what happens when I plug in a zero. If I plug in zero, I get a negative times a, can you see what I'm doing? You cannot, I'm sorry. Um, you, I get a negative times a positive um, divided by, plug in zero, and I get a negative, but then I square it, so it becomes positive, that is a two. Um, and so this is ultimately negative, so that's gonna be negative right here. Let's plug in negative three. I get a negative, I get a negative, I get a negative squared becomes a positive. This is a positive. This is equal to a positive. Um, these, those that are straightforward, they do alternate, but when weird stuff happens, you got to be careful. So um, let's plug in three. When I do, I get a positive, a positive, and then I get a positive times a positive divided by a negative squared, which is a positive. So this is a positive. And then let's plug in six. And can you see what I'm doing still? Um, I have a positive times a positive times a positive squared, which is a positive. Okay, and so that was my point, that we can't just assume that they alternate. That it was very nice of it to uh, prove my point. 
So we want to be less than zero. So all we want are, um, is the area where it's negative. And we don't want, notice it doesn't say equal. So I'm going to, I had solid lines here, uh, but now I'm coming back to the soft brackets anyway. Ooh, that's fun. I mean, if you're into that sort of thing. Okay, let's see. On this one, we have, um, the only thing we care about is um, positive three. So if I plug in zero, I get a negative. If I plug in four, I get a positive. And so where am I greater than zero? From three to infinity. Um, if you think about the, what that graph looks like, you can see how that's kind of straightforward. Um, this one, we have a, um, a zero. What is that? I subtract eight divided by four. I get x equals um, negative two, and I have x equals negative five as an asymptote. Okay, so the asymptote was negative five. The zero was negative two. Let's plug in zero. If I plug in zero, I get something positive. Um, if I plug in negative three, I have oh, negative 12 plus, um, what did I say? I'm plugging in negative three, negative, that's a negative on top and a positive on the bottom, which makes that a negative. Plug in negative six, negative 24 plus eight is still negative. Negative six on the bottom is, um, gives me a negative six plus five is a negative, so that's a positive. Okay, so where am I less than or equal to zero? I can't use negative five, but I can use two, negative two, I mean. Cool? Okie dokie. Um, and now we have, we have um, a bunch of things happening. We have a zero at negative two. We have a zero at one. And we have an asymptote at two. Okay, and so we, if I plug in zero, when I plug in zero, I get a negative times a positive squared over a negative. That's gonna be a positive, so that gives me a positive here. When I plug in negative three, I get a negative times a negative squared over a negative, which this becomes a positive and those become, uh, so this is also a positive. And then when I plug in one and a half, ew, okay, what happens? 1.5, if I plug in 1.5, I'm sorry, I need more space. Um, I have a positive, I have a, a positive squared, and I have a negative, which gives me a negative. If I plug in three, can you see what I'm doing still? I'm coming back here, I have a positive, a positive, and a positive, so everything's positive. So where am I greater than or equal to zero? Um, from negative infinity, negative two is equal to zero, so I can, just ignore it. I mean, I can go past it. Um, we'll use a hard bracket here, and then I can pick it up again from two to infinity. Um, it's probably not a bad idea to use Desmos and make sure we're right on all of these. If I'm wrong, will you tell me kindly in the comments? Um, I don't think I am, but I'm also not checking an answer key or using Desmos. So on this one, what's happening? We have a, um, an asymptote at positive one, and so plug in zero, and I get a positive plug in two, and I get a positive also. So where am I less than zero, less than or equal to zero? Nowhere, <laughs> none, no solution, maybe is the best way to say that, no solution, I can't spell. <laughs> okay, um, super, oh look, now they gave us a graph. This is his last example um, on this section. The graph, use the graph to answer, okay, so where am I less than or equal to zero? Um, I'm less than or equal to zero from um, negative three to, this looks like um, negative one, but I can equal zero there, and then it looks like a two again, I'm equal to zero, and then I go to this asymptote of three. Where am I greater than zero? Well, from negative infinity to the asymptote, pick it up again between this negative one and two. I can't equal the, and then on the other side of my asymptote, three to infinity. And then this last one, where am I greater than one? Oh, that was clever. Okay, so it's convenient that that's the asymptote. Um, and so I'll never actually equal one, so it could be greater than or just greater, greater than or greater than or equal to, and you'd get the same answer. So negative infinity to my asymptote of negative three. Excuse me, pick it up again from three to infinity.
those are fun. All right, um, this would have been a harder problem had they given you the equation, but they did not, so life was good. All right, like, subscribe, comment, um, tell me nice things, and go practice. Good luck to you.